everyone! In this video I'm going to show you how to make this ribbed mop cover and it is to fit one of these, a Swiffer, so that you are not buying and disposing of the disposable pre-moistened ones that come or that are made for this product. The nice thing about this is you can use the cleaning product that you like, you know, whatever smell you like, or if you prefer to make the homemade type, you have the freedom to do that. Alright, so we're going to use cotton yarn for this, and the reason I have all these balls out here is I want to show you, or maybe suggest to you, use up your scrap yarn if you ever clean with bleach for uh, your countertops or your floors to disinfect. This is a great time to use your, your leftover yarn. That way you always know that you know the ugly one is the one that you use for bleach. And I have the kitchen scale here because I know that a certain amount of ounces is how much I need to make one of these that will fit the Swiffer cover. We don't want these things slipping off, flying off when we're trying to clean our floors, right? So the sizing matters. You don't want it too big either. All right, so let me tear this out, and I know it's going to be about 1.8, 1.85 ounces. Let me pull together a few of these until I get that amount. And it's great. Still not there. Use all my greens and my grays for this. There's 1.7, 2.0. So I'm going to use these greens. So I'm not going to look too awful <laughs> since they somewhat go together. And then I'll put these away for another small project. All right, so I've got an option to use Category 3 yarn and Category 4 yarn in the written free pattern on my website, which, of course, I will link in the description. All right, so, of course, the the amount that you chain is going to be different based on which yarn you're using. So we have a pattern here. And I have another little tip. If you happen to use one of this uh, value type of yarn, Premier Disc Cotton, I like this. This is from the Dollar Tree. I don't know if it's sold elsewhere, but this is not quite enough to make one. And I always buy a few when I'm in there. But some of the other value yarns, these are not value. These are. They can be a little splitty to work with. And when you're using a smallish hook, like you're going to be using for this, either 4 millimeter or 4.5 millimeter, if you have them, or if you can afford them, you know, hooks are $10 or less, these smoother hooks from Tulip, these glide right through, and there's no, there's very minimal splitting. Just a little tip if you're struggling with that. All right, so I'm going to chain. I'm going to show you how to do the stitch to create this rib. It's not a back loop stitch because that would not, that would be too loosey goosey to be, you know, scrubbing the floor with when you're doing those back and forth motions on your floor. All right, so I'm making my slip knot. I'm going to just do a sample here. Chain a few. Now, on the second hook from the first, we're only skipping one, we're doing half double crochet on this first row. So it's a two row repeat. First one's simple, the next one's going to be maybe a new stitch to you, but you'll pick it up quickly. And I'm going to half double crochet across this row. And see how this hook is just making easy work of the splitting yarn. I can see it, it's wanting to split, but it will not because of the hook. I like so many people. Um, buy or did buy the ergonomic value hook set from Amazon years ago when I needed I realized that you know just one or two hooks is not enough if you're making a variety of projects and working with different yarns you really need 
several and they work fine I love the ergonomic handle but the actual metal that's what generally is going to separate the more expensive hooks from the value hooks is the actual metal here they're not you know polished as well some of them you can see the, the steam from the mold on them and they kind of catch they don't move as smoothly through the yarn and you're going to find that with the furls hooks also very smooth to work with all right so i'm at the end of the row I'm going to chain one and turn and now i'm going to work a linked stitch row and i do this a lot for my home items i like the texture of it so you'll do one single crochet in the first stitch go back into the same stitch, pick up a loop. And this is linking it to the next stitch. Three loops on hook, yarn over, draw through all three. So that's a linked single crochet stitch. Go into that stitch I just worked, pull up a loop. Go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Let me finish this row and show you how to end the row. And this, the link stitch can make a project lean a little bit, like towards one side, and then you end up with a lopsided project. However, in this particular design, you'll see my edges are nice and straight without any extra anything. I didn't do anything special to them. Well, maybe I did because I'm about to show you how to finish the row. Right, so let me go all the way through here. And now you see here. I'm at the end, I have one more stitch, and it's that turn, since I only went in one stitch instead of two stitches when I did the uh, turn from my first half double crochet row. So it looks a little short because the half double crochet has more height than a single crochet. But the linked single crochet has more, since it's you know, got more yarn in it, has more bulk and height than a single crochet. So I'm going to go into that side turn, one chain, of, well I say side, but it's slanted. That's the one I'm going to work into as my final stitch. So it's splitting yarn. Thank goodness I have a nice hook to work it. Go right in there, pull up my yarn. Let's dive, grab it, there we go. Pull it up, yarn over, draw through all three. Look at that. It's an even at oops. Split out so it's even. And you'll see as you're working it's gonna fill out, but this is a short sample of how to do this. Now when you look on the back, you see that doing that link stitch created some texture. And this is gonna be nice when you're scrubbing your floors. Yes, we want our crochet goodies to be pretty, but for a floor scrubber, we want it to be functional. Am I right? Okay, chain one. We're only chaining one when we turn every time. Half double crochet across. So you're going to repeat those two rows, alternating them, until you get to the right height and have all the measurements in the pattern. And then next I'm going to show you how to seam it together so that it fits on your Swiffer. And it's not going to tuck into the top, it's going to actually have folding side kind of envelope style to snuggle around your Swiffer. I really like using these. I made one out of scrap yarn about a year and a half ago and I realized I need some more so that I have plenty between uh, when I do washing. I only do wash maybe once every couple of weeks and I mop twice a week. Okay, so see our texture? You're going to start getting that waffly ribbed look. 
these have. This is a category three yarn, and this is a category four yarn. And you can use um, one side looks different than the other. You can use whichever side you like best, but I like this side. This one's a little more textured. That's just what you feel would work best for you. All right, so let's get to assembling this into a working Swiffer cover. I'm excited to show you the project trackers I have designed and I wish I did this years ago because they have been really wonderful to have. So first of all, nice size, fits right into a project bag and this is the large print. In the front of the large print, I want to show you, there is a true to life four inch ruler so you can check your gauge easily. You don't have to fumble around look for a ruler. I've used this quite a bit in just the past what, four projects I've used in this book. And there's also small print. And each of these books has sections for small projects, mid-sized, and large projects like blankets. So the small projects, there's 60 stitches, like a, you know, a dishcloth something like that. And there's room for notes and I have space after each stitch that you check off. If you have to put a note, maybe you changed a color, you changed a stitch, you changed your hook, all of that can be in there. Mid-size projects, 180 stitches and there's room for notes. And then the blanket size, 330 stitches. And then Let's compare the large size print, which I need because I have terrible eyes since I was a teenager, compared to the small size. So handy. And of course a link will be available to get these if you want one for yourself. Alright, so a swiffer base is 10 inches this way and there's about, it looks flat, but there's about a half inch width right here, so we need to allow for that. So I'm going to count this as 11 inches. That way it's 10 across plus one half inch here and one half inch here. 11 inches, right? So with our final piece, that would mean this will fold up about three inches. <clears throat> three inches. I'm going to turn it over and just double check if I have the right width for my Swiffer. Okay, we're at 11 inches. And of course with crochet there's going to be a little flexibility. We'll need that to kind of finagle it onto our sweeper. It needs to be secure so there's a happy medium of <clears throat> too tight and not tight enough. What I'm going to do is take my darning needle, and I did do a single crochet border around the whole thing, which you've seen the pattern. Pull this double thick, I have a long strand here I'm working with. securely kind of whip stitch it around. And I'll do this to both just only be stitching this section, right? The top and bottom portions on no, this one, just the top and the bottom. And that way, you slip your Swiffer in, it'll go right in like that. All snug, and then you can do your clean. 
I do mop and glow style. Do you, any of you remember that? It depends on your age where you would just squirt the floor with your mop and glow cleaner. So yeah, I'll just kind of squirt some out onto the floor of my homemade, whatever I'm using. If I have Mrs. Myers or whatever, Mr. Clean, whatever formula, Pine Saw. I don't have a favorite cleaner. All right, I didn't cut my yard well. I'm getting my scissors. how to do this. I'm not doing it the right way myself. Although, I don't think there's a right and wrong way really to stitch this up as long as you have it nicely secured. Okay, so I'm going to finish stitching these sides up and I will meet you back when I am finishing the second side. Okay, I'm on my last couple of stitches, seeing this together. I'm just leaving in the starting end, and then this was my starting tail that's gotten woven in across the row as well. And then how I tie this off, because I'm going to turn it, I'm going to flip it, because this is, the for me, the wrong side, although it doesn't matter. Use whatever side you want. You'll see when I turn it, it'll look perfect, beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to knot twice this end. And so just as I'm coming up to the last stitch, bring my yarn through to create a knot. And do it one more time. Well, as long as piece of yarn to seam a small project with, right? Be my prize for the year. <laughs> oh, trim. So you see, I did all my knots on these corners. It won't show because turn it this way. This way. And then let's test her out. Put my slipper here. Put this on before it's wet. Got a little sock for your slipper. Oh, put all the way on. Sadly, we don't want this thing flying off. Then you can see the ends are right here nicely secured. And I'm ready to go clean my floor. And I have more, so I won't run out of them between laundry days. All right, let me know if you make this, and if you enjoyed this video, give me a like. That helps the channel. And I will be back with another pattern in the somewhat near future, I'm sure. And I hope to see you again. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.